order. Fifteen sous. We interfere. Why? Soldiers of the household of the king. The play begins at two, huh? When we come oh, early, we have time to eat. What is the play this afternoon? With La Clories. What a play. Great actors we shall see today. Both well, Marie. Hurry with those lights, 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 lights. Oranges, milk, raspberry syrup, lemonade. Make way, I say. Cuisine. Ah, the faithful. <laughs> oh, uh, Linier. May I present to you, Baron Christian de Nouviette. <laughs> yes, I've been in Paris two or three weeks only. I join the guards tomorrow. Oranges, milk, <laughs> lemonade. Oh, we have an audience today. <laughs> My dear boy, I came here to serve you. But where's the lady? <laughs> I'll be going. Oh, not yet, please. She is always here. I, I must find some way to meet her. I am dying of love. Well, you know everyone, the whole court, the town. Surely you can tell me her name. Oh, she, she may be one of those intellectuals. How do I talk to such a woman? For well, this fine manner of writing and of speaking nowadays, not for me. I'm just a soldier. That's her box on the right. I mm, must be going. Please, wait. Uh, Ragano! Oh, oh, oh. Ragano, poet and pastry cook! Have you seen Monsieur de Cyrano? No, he's not here. Oh. Permit me. Ragano, confectioner! Oh, <laughs> the chief support of modern poetry. Oh. Yes. Uh, too much honor. Uh, but Cyrano not here? Astonishing! Oh, why so? Well, Montfleury plays. Yes, I hear that Hippopotamus uh. assumes the role of Phaedo. Uh, but what is that to Cyrano? Have you not heard? Monsieur de Cyrano so hates Montfleury that he has forbidden him for three weeks to appear upon the stage. Well? Well, Montfleury plays. Is Cyrano not an extraordinary man? Uh. The best friend and the bravest soul That's alive. Okay. Poet, swordsman, musician, philosopher. Such a remarkable appearance, too. Oh. <laughs> Truly. I would not look to find his portrait done by the solemn Philippe de Champagne. <laughs> but he might have been a model for Callot. <laughs> One of those wild swashbucklers. Hat with three plumes, doublet with six points. His long cape behind him cocked over his sword like the tail of a strutting Chanticleer. <laughs> Prouder than all the Tamberlands hatched out of Gascogne. And to complete this Punchinello figure, such a nose. Uh, <laughs> truly, my lords, there is no such nose as that nose. You cannot look upon it without saying, oh, oh no, impossible, <laughs> exaggerated. <laughs> and then you smile and say, oh, I might have known. Presently, he will take it off. <laughs> uh, but that Monsieur de Bergerac will never do. He keeps it. And heaven help the man who smiles. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Herself? Quickly, her name? Ah, Madeleine Robin, called Roxanne. Refined, intellectual, uh. unmarried. Ah. <laughs> no title, though rich enough. Mm. She is an orphan and cousin to Cyrano, he of whom we spoke just now. Mm. And the man with her? Oh, that man, Comte de Guiche in love with her, married himself, however, to the niece of Cardinal Richelieu. Mm. Wishes Roxanne, there, therefore, to marry one Monsieur de Valver, a friend of his, and, well, accommodating. She refuses, nevertheless, the Guiche is powerful, and, <laughs> look, someone looking at you. Roxanne. Oh, very well, then, I'll be leaving you. Good day, good day. No sign anywhere of Cyrano. Wait and see. I hope he has not seen the play, Bill. Oh. Look there, that friend of yours. Well? Good as dead, understand? Ambushed. But why? He wrote a song about no matter. There's a hundred men waiting for him tonight. I'm supposed to be one of them. A hundred? Who arranged this? That's a secret. Where are they to be? Poor to know, on his way home. Tell him so and save his life. Of course I'll go! Swine, a hundred against one man! To leave her here and to leave him. God, I must save Lignier! The play! Begin the play! Silence! Also re-enters now? Uh, opens the play? Then Cyrano is not here. Oh. Oh. 
eyes happy. He who hides oh. from pomp and power in sylvan shade and solitary bower, where balmy zephyrs fan his burning cheeks. Wretch! What? Have I not forbade you what? these three weeks? Well, is Cyrano himself, oh. king of clowns, leave the stage no. at once. Now, now, now! You disobey me. Go on, go on. Thrice happy he well, who hides... Well, 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 monarch of Montebanks, <sighs> must I come and plant a forest on your shoulder? Oh. 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 Thrice happy he Go. who hides... Presently, I shall grow angry. Oh. <laughs> Messieurs, if you will protect me... Well, uh, proceed. Oh. Fat swine, oh. you dare breathe one balmy zephyr more, I'll fan your cheeks oh. for you. Oh. That oh. will do, Montfleury, play on, play on. Fly goose, shoo, take to your wings before I pluck your plumes oh. and draw your gourd. No. Oh. Off stage. Oh. What? Still there. Very well, then I enter left with knife to carve this large Italian sausage. <laughs> Sir, when you insult me, you insult the muse. Sir, if the muse, who never knew your name, had the honor to meet you, be sure that after one glance at that face of yours, that figure of a mortuary urn, she would apply her buskin toward the rear. <laughs> be gone. And who might you be, Samson? Precisely. Would you kindly lend me your jawbone? <laughs> I offer one universal challenge to you all. Approach young heroes. I will take your names. Each in his turn. No crowding. Who will head the list? You, sir. No. You. To the first man who falls, I'll build a monument. Not one. Will all who wish to die. Please raise their hands. I see. You are so modest, you might blush before a naked sword. Sweet innocence, not one name, not one finger. Very well, then, I go on. I'd have our theater cured of this carbuncle, or if not, well then, the lancet. Oh. <laughs> Attend to me, full moon. I clap my hands three times thus. I, 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 on the third, but you will eclipse yourself. I Ready? One. <laughs> Perhaps. Two. Perhaps. Two. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Let him if he dare. After all, monsieur, what reason have you to hate this Montfleury? My dear friend, I have two reasons, either one alone conclusive. Primo, he is a lamentable actor who mouths his verse and moans his tragedy and heaves up <laughs> like, like a hog carrier lines that ought to soar on their own wings. Secundo, well, that's my secret. But you close the play La Clarice. Are we to miss our entertainment? My dear old fellow, the poetry of Varro, being worth zero or less, <laughs> I feel I have done poetic justice. Mm. Quite so. And the mere money, possibly you would like that returned, yes? Bella Rose, you speak the first word of intelligence. I will not wound the mantle of the muse. Here, catch. Oh. And hold oh. your tongue. Oh. Oh. Monsieur! <laughs> You are hereby authorized to close our play every night on the same terms. <laughs> Kindly pass out quietly. Idiot. <laughs> what a scandal! Montfleury, the, the great Montfleury! Oh. Did you know that the Duke de Candel was his patron? Who is yours? No one. You may go. Or tell me. Why are you staring at my nose? 
What? No, I am... Um, Does it astonish you? Your grace misunderstands my... Is um, it long and soft and dangling like a trunk? I never said it was or long. Or crooked like an owl's beak? Um, um, or perhaps uh, a pimple ornaments the end of it? Um, or, or a fly parading up and down this phenomenon? But I've been careful not to look... And why not, if you please? Why not? It disgusts um, you then? Oh, by no means. Does its color appear to you unwholesome? Oh, my dear sir, I am... Uh, then why assume this deprecating manner? Possibly you find it just a trifle... large? Oh, no! Small. Oh, very small. Infinitesimal. What? You accuse me of absurdity! Why small my nose? Why magnificent my nose, you pug, you knob, you button head, know that I glory in this nose of mine, for a great nose indicates a great man, genial, courteous, intellectual, virile, courageous, as I am and such as you, poor wretch, will never dare to be even in imagination. For that face, that blank, inglorious concavity, which my right hand finds on top of you, is as devoid of pride, of poetry, of soul, of picturesqueness, of contour, of character, of nose, in short, as that which at the end of that limp spine of yours, my right foot! <laughs> Take notice, all who find this feature of my countenance a theme for comedy. Mm -hmm. Presently, this fellow will grow tiresome. Oh, how he blows his trumpet. Well, will no one interfere? No one. Observe, I myself will proceed to put him in his place. Ah, <clears throat> your nose, your nose is rather large. Rather. Oh, well. Uh, is that all? Uh, uh, oh, no, good sir, you, you are too simple. Why, you might have said, oh, a great many things. Why waste your opportunity? For example, thus, aggressive. I, sir, if that nose were mine, I'd have it amputated on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Descriptive. It is a rock, a crag, a cape, a cape. Nay, say rather, a peninsula. <laughs> Inquisitive. What is that receptacle? A razor case or a portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> Kindly. Uh, do you love the little birds so much that when they come and sing to you, you give them this to perch on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> thoughtful. <gasps> Somebody fetch my parasol. Those delicate colors fade so in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Eloquent. When it blows, the typhoon howls. And the clouds dark. <laughs> uh, dramatic. Who? Oh, when it bleeds, the Red Sea. Oh. <laughs> Enterprising. Ooh la la. What a sign for some uh, perfumer. <laughs> <laughs> Rustic. Hey, oh, call you that a nose? Nah, nah, I be no fool like what you think I be. That there's a blue cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> These, my dear sir, are some of the things you might have said. Had you about you some tinge of letters or of wit to color your discourse. But of wit, you never had an atom. And of letters, you'd need but three to write you down. An A, S, S. <laughs> Moreover, if you had the invention to make a jest of me, be sure that you would not then articulate the twentieth part of half a syllable of the beginning. For I say these things lightly enough myself, about myself, but I allow none else to utter them. Be come. Come. Oh, these grand, elegant airs! Oh, a clown who, look at him, not even gloves, no ribbons, no lace, no buckles on his shoes. I carry my adornments on my soul. I go comparisoned in gems unseen, trailing white plumes of freedom, garlanded with my good name. No figure of a man, but a soul clothed in shining armor, hung with deeds for decoration, and swinging at my side courage, mm. and on the stones of this old town, making the sharp truth ring like golden spur. Mm. But, but you, you, uh, I have no gloves. A pity, too. I had one, the last of an old pair, and lost that, very careless of me, 
some gentleman offered me an impertinence. I left it. Out in his face! Oh. Don't bunk and fool! You shall die exquisitely. Poets? Why, yes, a poet, if you will. So while we fence, I'll make you a ballad extempore. A ballad? Yes, I'll compose one while I fight with you. And at the end of the last line, thrust home. Will you? I will. Ballad of the duel at the Hotel de Bourgogne between de Bergerac and a Boeotian. Oh, what do you mean by that? Oh, that? The title. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Stop, stop. Let me choose my rhyme. Oh, now, here we go. Lightly, I toss my hat away. Languidly over my arm, let fall the cloak that covers my bright array. Then out swords. Ah. And to work with all. Hey, where shall I skewer my peacock? <laughs> Nay, better for you to have shunned this brawl. Here in the heart, through your ribbons gay. Oh, yes, yes. In the belly, under your silken yes, shawl. Yes, yes, yes. Hark, how the steel rings musical. <laughs> Mark how my point floats, light as the foam, ready to drive you back to the wall. Then as I end the refrain, thrust home. Oh, what a rhyme. You are quite this way. You break, you cower, you cringe, you crawl. And I parry your last to say. So may the turn of a hand forestall life with its honey, death with its gall. So may the turn of my fancy roam free for a time, so the rhymes recall. <laughs> Then as I end the refrain, thrust uh, uh, home. Refrain. Prince, pray God, that is Lord of all, pardon your soul, for your time has come. Then as I end the refrain, Thrust home. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Let this crowd go. May we stay? Uh, certainly. Uh, strike the set, close the house, uh, leave the lights. Uh, we rehearse the new farce after dinner. Well done. Well Very good. You do not dine? I? No. Why not? Uh, because. Because I have no money. But the purse of gold. <laughs> Farewell, paternal pension. So you have until the first of next month? Nothing. <laughs> what a fool. Uh, but what a gesture. Uh, pardon, monsieur. <laughs> a man ought never to go hungry. Please, I have everything here. <laughs> My dear child, I, I cannot bend this Gaston pride of mine to accept such a kindness. But, uh, but, but for fear that I may give you Pain, if I refuse, I will take, oh, not very much, a grape, only one, a glass of water, clear, and um, half a macaroon. Oh, old idiot. <laughs> Please, sir, nothing more? Why, yes, your hand to kiss. Thank you, sir. Good night. Ah, dinner, drink, dessert. There, I was abominably hungry. Now I am listening. Well? <laughs> Look at all the enemies you have made. How many do you think? <laughs> Just 48 without the women. <laughs> Enough. You make me happy. Mm. Well then, the real reason you hate Montfleury, come, the truth now. That's Silenus. 
who cannot hold his belly in his arms, still dreams of being sweetly dangerous among the women, sighs and languishes, making frogs' faces. I hate him ever since one day he dared smile upon. Oh, my friend, I, I seem to see across some flower a great snail crawling. How? What is it possible? For me to love? I love. May I know? You have never said. Whom I love? Think of me. Think a moment. Me, whom the plainest woman would despise. Me, with this nose of mine that marches on before me by a quarter of an hour. <laughs> whom should I love? Why, of course, it, it must be the woman in the world. In all this world, most sweet, also most wise, most witty, and most fair. Who and what is this woman? Dangerous, mortally, without meaning. Exquisite, without imagining. Nature's own snare to allure manhood. A, a white rose wherein love lies in ambush of its natural prey. Who knows her smile has, has known a perfect faith. She creates grace in her own image, brings heaven to earth with one movement of her hand. Madeleine Robin, your cousin. Yes, Roxanne. And why not? If you love her, tell her so. You have covered yourself with glory in her eyes this very day. My friend, look at me and tell me how much hope there remains with this protuberance. Oh, I have no illusions. Now and then, bah, I may grow tender, walking alone in the blue cool of the evening, through some garden fresh with flowers after the benediction of the rain. My poor big devil of a nose inhales April. And so I follow with my eyes, where some boy with a girl upon his arm passes a patch of silver. And I feel, I, I wish somehow I had a woman too, walking with little steps in the moonlight and holding my arm so and smiling. And then I dream and I forget until I see the shadow of my profile on the wall. My friend. My friend, I have my bitter days knowing myself so ugly, so alone. Sometimes I... You weep? Oh, no. Oh, not that ever. No, that, that would be too grotesque. Tears trickling down all the long way along this nose of mine. I will not profane the dignity of sorrow. There is nothing more sublime than tears, nothing. Shall I make them look ridiculous in my poor person? But your wit, your courage. Why, that poor child who offered you just now your dinner, she... Well, you saw her, her eyes did not avoid you. That is true. Well then, Roxanne herself, watching your duel just now, was paler than... Pale? Her lips parted, her hands thus at her breast. I saw it, speak to her, man. Through my nose, she might laugh at me. That is the one thing in this world I fear. A lady asking for monsieur. Monsieur, a message for you from our good cousin Roxanne. We desire to know when and where we may see him privately. <laughs> to see me? To see you. We have certain things to tell you. Certain uh, things. Oh, my heavens. Um, Tomorrow, at the first flush of dawn, where can we meet and talk a little? I am thinking of... And you think? Of uh, the shop of Ragano. Ragano, pastry cook? Who dwells? Uh, yes, um, Rue Saint Honore. We are agreed. Remember, seven o'clock. Until then. I'll be there. Me? To see me? <laughs> now you're not quite so gloomy. Well, after all, she knows I exist, no matter why. So now you are going to be happy. Now I'm going to be a storm, a flame. I. I, 
need to fight whole armies. I, I have ten hearts. I have a hundred arms. I am too strong to war with mortals. Bring me giants. <laughs> Cyrano, here. Here's your stray lamb. L L Liniere, what's wrong with him? He wants to speak with you. He's afraid to go home. Why? This letter. A hundred against one. That's me. I'm the one. All because of a little song. A hundred men waiting, understand? At the Port de Nell on my way home. Dangerous that- A hundred? Is that all? You are going home. Why? Take that lantern. Forward march. I say I'll be the man that sees you home tonight. And you gentlemen, remember, no rescue. Let me fight alone! <laughs> Saucepans gleams the dawn anew. Stifle, my soul, thy song, the God's best dower. The lute's hour passes, tis the oven's hour. <sighs> a, a, a dust of flour, that pastry is too short. How uh, much? Uh, uh, I need two feet. Uh, huh? A tartlet, a new sort. Oh. Depart, my muse. I pray thee now retire, lest thy sweet eyes be reddened by my fire. Oh, that pastry palace lacks as yet a roof. <laughs> Master, I thought of you when I designed this, hoping it might please you. Oh, a hog. In puff paste. And the jewels, candied fruit. And the strings, barley sugar. Oh, psst, my wife. Uh, oh. uh, graceful, yes. <laughs> Ridiculous! Oh! Oh, uh, thank you. Pack of paper bags. Oh. <gasps> the sacred verses of my poets rent asunder, limb from limb to make base packages for pastry. Your poets left them here to pay for eating half our stock in trade. Oh. We ought to make some profit off of them. And would you blame the locust? For his song. I blame the locust for his appetite. Oh, oh. Ulysses, when he left Penelope. Oh. Phoebus, golden crown. Oh, Jack of oh. Dreams. Oh. Dragon, uh, what time is it? Uh, uh, six o'clock. An uh, hour more. Felicitations. And for what? Uh, your victory. R which one? At the Hotel de Bourgogne. Ah, the duel. The duel in rhyme. He talks of nothing else. <laughs> Nonsense. Well, what time now, Ragnar? Uh, five after six. Thrust home! <laughs> and a ballade, too. <laughs> Your hand? What have you done? Oh, my hand? Uh, oh. Nothing. I, I expect someone. Yes? Uh, leave us here alone when the time comes. Oh, yes. Uh, have you a pen? Uh, an eagle stutter. <laughs> Oh. Only to write, to fold, to give it to her, oh, and then to go, oh, coward, and yet the devil take my soul if I dare speak one word to her. What time now? Uh, quarter past six. One word among the many thousand I have here. I will write her that letter I have written in my heart, torn up, and written over many times, so many times, that all I have to do is to remember and to write it down. Huh. Oh, uh, come in, come in. Yes, yes. Oh, if I can see the faintest spark of hope. Oh. Uh, greetings. Uh, 
Pardon? One word. Take two. Do you have a good digestion? Wonderful. <laughs> Do you like cream puffs? Only with whipped cream. <laughs> take, oh. um, take three. Oh. <laughs> um, six. <laughs> Embosomed in a poem. Uh, do you love nature? Mad about it? Uh, then go out and eat these in the street. Oh, uh, do not return <laughs> <laughs> until you oh. finish them. Oh. <laughs> Blessed above all others be the hour when you remembered to remember me uh, and came to tell me what? First, let me thank you, because that man, that preacher, whom your sword made sport of yesterday, his patron, one De Guiche. who thinks himself in love with me, would have forced that man upon me for a husband. I understand. <sighs> so much the better then I fought not for my nose, but your bright eyes. And then to tell you, are you, I wonder, still the same big brother almost that you used to be when we were children? Playing by the pond in the old garden down there? I remember. Every summer you, you came to Bergerac. You used to make swords out of bulrushes. You dandelion dolls with golden hair. <laughs> in those days you did everything I wished. Roxanne in short skirts was called Madeline. Was I pretty? Oh, <laughs> not too plain. <laughs> Sometimes when you had hurt your hand, you used to come running to me, and I would be your mother and say, oh, in a very grown-up voice, what have you been doing to yourself? Let me see. <gasps> Wait, and I said, let me see still at your age. How did you do that? Playing with the big boys down by the Port Donnell. <laughs> come here to me. Such a wise little mother. And tell me while I wash that blood away how many you played with. Oh, about a hundred. Um, tell me what you were going to tell me if, if you dared. I think I do dare now. It seems like long ago when I could tell you things. Yes, I dare. I love someone. Ah. Uh -huh. Someone who does not know, uh, at least not yet, but he will know someday. Uh, a big boy who loves me too and, and is afraid of me and keeps away and never says one word. Uh, Let me see your hand. I know, I see him trying. Uh, there now. Is that better? Besides, only to think, he is a soldier too in your own regiment. Uh, Yes, in the guards, your company, too. Ah. And such a man. Oh, he is proud, noble, young, brave, beautiful. Beautiful? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Uh, this, my, my sore hand. Uh. Well, I love him. That is all. Oh, and I never saw him except at the comedy. You have never spoken. Only with our eyes. You, you say he is in the guards. His name? Baron Christian de Nouviette. Baron Christian, he is not in the guards. Yes, since this morning. So says Captain Corbon du Castel Jaloux. How, how soon we lose our hearts. But you, my dear child, you who, who love only words, wit, the grand manner, why, for all you know, he, this man could be a savage or a fool. His curls are like the hero from Jerfay. His mind may be as curly as his hair. Not with such eyes. I read his soul in them. Yes, our souls are written in our eyes, but, but if he be a bungler... Then I shall die there. And, and you brought me here to tell me this? I do not yet quite understand, madame, the the reason for your confidence. They say that in the guards, oh, it frightens me, you are all Gascon. <laughs> and we pick a quarrel with any flatfoot who intrudes himself, whose blood is not pure Gascon like our own. Is that what you have heard? I am so afraid for him. Not without reason. And I thought that you, 
You were so brave, so invincible yesterday against all those brutes. And I thought that if you, whom they all fear... Oh, well. I will defend your little barrel. Will you just for me? Because I have always been your friend. Of course. And will you be his friend? I, I will be his friend. And never let him fight a duel. No, never. Oh, but you are a darling. I must go. You never told me about last night. Why, you must have been a hero. Have him write and tell me all about it, will you? A hundred men against one. What courage. Oh. I have done better since. Here he is, our hero. The whole town is looking for you. I, I hope you have not told them. Certainly I... I told them. Oh, here comes all Paris. And Roxanne. Hush. Why? Yesterday I did not have so many friends. <laughs> Monsieur de Guiche. Oh. Uh. The Marshal de Gassillon wishes to express through me his admiration. He has heard of your affair. Oh. He said the story of your fight would have been incredible were it not for the witness uh, of our eyes. <laughs> your name is known already as a soldier. You are one of those wild Gascons, are you not? The guard, yes, a cadet. One of ourselves. Yeah. Ah, so then all these gentlemen with the haughty air, these are the famous... Serena. Captain. Our troop being all present, be so kind as to present them to the Comte de Guiche. Mm. The cadets of Gascoigne, the defenders of Carbon de Castel Jaloux. Skull breakers they are and sword benders. Red blood is their favorite brew. Hot haters and loyal befrienders, wherever a quarrel engenders, they're ready and waiting for you. The cadets of Gascoigne, the, the defenders, defenders of Carbon de Castel Jaloux. <laughs> Poets are fashionable nowadays to have about one. Would you care to join my following? No, sir, I do not follow. <laughs> Your duel yesterday amused my uncle, the Cardinal. Oh. I might help you there. Oh, great heavens. I suppose you have written a tragedy. They all have. Now at last you have it played, your Agrippine. Oh. Take it to him. Why not? Really? He is himself a dramatist. Let him rewrite a few lines here and there, and he'll approve the rest. Impossible. My blood curdles to think of altering one. Comma. Yes. Uh, ah, but when he likes a thing, he pays well. Yes, but not so well as I. When I have made a line that sings itself so that I love the sound of it, I pay myself a hundred times. Mm. <laughs> you are proud, my friend. You have observed that. Cyrano! See here! Oh. <laughs> Look what we found this morning in the streets. The plumes dropped in their flight by those fine birds who showed the white feather. Uh. <laughs> Spoils of the hunt well mounted. Whoever hired those rascals, he must be an angry man today. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Do you know? Myself. I hired them to do the sort of work we do not soil our hands with, punishing a drunken poet. Well, what should we do with them? They ought to be preserved before they spoil. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, will you not return these to your friends? <laughs> <laughs> As for you, sir, have you read Don Quixote? I have and found myself the hero. Be so good as to read once more the chapter of the windmills. Chapter 13. Windmills, remember, if you fight with them, may swing round their huge arms and cast you down into the mire. <laughs> or up among the stars. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen. You have done it now. What would you have me do? Seek for the patronage of some great man like a creeping vine on a tall tree, crawl upward where I cannot stand alone. No thank you. Dedicate, as others do, poems to pawnbrokers. Wear out my belly, groveling in the dust. No thank you. Scratch the back of any swine that roots up gold for me. Use the fire God gave me to burn incense under the nose of wood and stone all day long. No thank you. Mm. But to sing, to laugh, to dream, to walk in my own way and be alone, with an eye to see things as they really are, 
a voice that means manhood, to travel any road under the stars, under the sun, nor doubt if fame or fortune lie beyond the bourne, never to make a line I have not heard in my own heart. Mm. Yet with all modest to say, my soul be satisfied with flowers, with fruit, with weeds even, but gather them in the one garden you may call your own. I am too proud to be a parasite, and if my nature lacks the germ that grows towering to heaven like the mountain pine or like the oak sheltering multitude, I stand, not high it may be, but alone. Alone, yes, but why stand against the world? What devil has possessed you now to go everywhere making yourself enemies? Watching other people making friends as a dog makes friends? <laughs> I mark the manner of these canine courtesies and think, here comes, thank goodness, another enemy. <laughs> yes, tell this to all the world, and then to me say very softly that she loves you not. Hush. Cyrano, your story. Uh, presently. A narrow-gutted northerner. <laughs> Sir. Hark ye, Monsieur de Nouviet. You were to know there was a certain subject. I would say a certain object. <laughs> Never to be named among us. <laughs> Utterly unmentionable. And that is? Look at me. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Why, of course, the uh, no. We never speak that word. To breathe, it is to do with him. He has exterminated several whose tone of voice suggested. <laughs> Would you die before your time? Just mention anything convex or cartilaginous. One word, one syllable, one gesture. Nay, one sneeze, <laughs> and your handkerchief becomes your winding sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Captain. Sir, what is the proper thing to do when Gascons grow too boastful? Prove to them. That one may be a Norman and have courage. I thank you. Cyrano, your story! Oh, yes, yes, your story! Yes. Ah, my, my story, well, I, uh, I uh, marched on all alone to meet those devils. Overhead, the moon hung like a gold watch at the fob of heaven. Till suddenly some angel rubbed a cloud, as it might be his handkerchief, across the shining crystal, and the night came down. No lamps in those back streets. It was so dark, you could not see beyond your, your nose. <laughs> Who is that man there? A recruit. His name? Christian de Nouviet. <laughs> I, uh, I see. Well, uh, uh, as I was saying, I, uh, it grew dark. You could not see your hand before your eyes. I marched on, thinking how all for the sake of one poor poet who wrote a broadside whenever he took a noseful. Took a notion? Whenever he took a notion. For his sake, I might antagonize some dangerous man, one powerful enough to make me pay. Through the nose. Pay the piper. After all, why am I putting in my nose? Or why am I putting in my oar? Well, the quarrel's not of mine. Uh, after all, I'm, I'm already here, so I may as well go through it. Come, Gascon, do your duty. Suddenly, a sword flashed in the dark. I, I caught it fair. On the nose! On my blade! Before I knew it, there I was. Rubbing noses! Crossing swords with half a score at once. I handed one. A nosegay! One thrust hungry, he went down. The rest gave way. I charged. Nose in the air! On air! Out of here! All of you! All of you! Leave me here alone with that man. <laughs> to my arms? Sir? You have courage. Uh, that. You are brave. That pleases me. You mean... Do you not know I am her brother? Whose? Hers. Roxanne. Her brother? You? Her cousin, much the same. And, and she has told you? Everything. She loves me? Perhaps. 
My dear sir, uh, more than I can say, I am, I am this honored. This is rather sudden. Well, please, forgive me. This fellow is a handsome devil. Uh, on my honor, if you had known how much I have yes, admired. Yes, yes. And all those noses. Oh, please, I, I apologize. Roxanne expects a letter. Not from me. I, yes, why not? Once I write, that ruins all. Why? Because, because I am a fool, stupid enough to hang myself. But no, you are no fool. You call yourself a fool. There's proof enough in that. Besides, you, you did not attack me like a fool. <laughs> Anyone can pick a quarrel. Yes, I have a sort of rough and ready soldier's tongue. I know that. But with any woman, paralyzed, speechless, dumb, <laughs> I can only look at them. I'm one of those who never can speak love. Strange. I, now it seems I, if I gave my mind to it, might speak love well. Oh, if I only had the words to say what I have here. Well, besides, you know, Roxanne, how uh, sensitive. One rough word and sweet illusion, gone. I wish you might be my interpreter. I wish I had your wit. Borrow it then. Your beautiful young manhood. Lend me that, and we too shall be one hero of romance. What? Would you dare repeat to her the words I gave you day by day? You mean? I, I mean, Roxanne shall have no disillusionment. Come, sh shall we win her both together? Take, take the soul within this leathern jack of mine and breathe it into you. So there's my heart under your velvet now. But, Cyrano, I... But, but, Christian, why not? I am afraid. I know. Afraid. When you have her all alone, you lose all. Have no fear. It is yourself she loves. Give her yourself put into words, my words, upon your lips. <laughs> your eyes, they burn like Will you. Will you? Will you? Does it mean it, so much to it you? It means... A comedy, a, a, a situation for a poet. Uh, come, shall, shall we collaborate? I'll be your cloak of darkness, your enchanted sword, your ring to charm the fairy prince. But the letter! I cannot write. Uh, the, the letter, yes. Uh, here. <laughs> what is this? All there, uh, all but the address. Oh, I... Oh, you, you may send it. It, it, it will serve. Why have you done this? I, I have amused myself, as, as we all do, we poets, writing verses to any pretty name. You, you, you might have had a pocket full of them. You will find me all the more eloquent, being insincere. Come. First, there, there must be a few changes here and there. Written at random, can it fit Roxanne? Like her own glove. N no, but... My son, have faith. Roxanne will know this letter for her own. My friend. Nothing. A silence like the tomb, I, I hardly dare look. Whoa. What? Well, well, well. Here's our Cyrano, Christianized. Offend one nostril and he turns the other. Now we are allowed to talk about his nose. Hey, Leeds, come here. Oh, what a horrid smell. What is it? What seems to have died around here? A nose game. <laughs>
and so my wife ran off with a musketeer. I was alone. I was ruined. There remained nothing for me to do but to hang myself. So I did that. <laughs> Along comes Monsieur de Bergerac and cuts me down. Ruined? I thought your pastry was a great success. Oh, that's hmm. very kind. But, uh, oh. oh, a serenade? How pleasant. Is that you, Cyrano? I'll be down. Wait. Did you train these virtuosi? No, I won them on a bet. <laughs> and so until tomorrow, they are mine, my private orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasant at first, but they grow a trifle. Uh, uh, go play a minuet to Montfleury. Oh. Uh, then they're finna play out of tune. <laughs> and tell him I <laughs> sent you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I came to inquire about our friend, our friend with the great soul. He is beautiful and brilliant, and I love him. Do you find Christian intellectual? Oh, no man ever so beautifully said those things, those pretty nothings that are everything. Sometimes he falls into a reverie. His inspiration fails, and then all at once he says something absolutely, oh! Really? How like a man? You think a man with a handsome face must be a fool? He talks well about matters of the heart? He does not talk. He rhapsodizes, dreams. He writes well? Wonderfully. Listen now. <clears throat> Take my heart, and I shall have it all the more. Plucking the flowers, we keep the plant in bloom. Well, <laughs> and this, knowing you have in store more heart to give than I to find heart room. First he has too much, then too little. Just how much heart does he need? You're teasing me. You are jealous. Jealous? Of his poetry. You poets are like that. Monsieur de Guiche, oh. go inside. If he does not find you here, it may be just as well. He may suspect... My secret. Yes, he is in love with me, and he is powerful. Mm. Let him not know. Very well, very well. We were just leaving. I came only to say farewell. You leave Paris? Yes, for the front, and tonight. We have orders to besiege Arras. Arras? It has left me desolate. When shall I see you? Ever? Did you know I was made a colonel? Bravo. Regiment of the Guards. Of the Guards? His regiment, your cousin, the mighty man of words. Down there we may have an accounting. Are you sure the Guards are ordered? Under my command. Christian. What is it? To the war, perhaps never again to. When a woman cares, is that nothing? You say this now to me? Now at the very moment? Tell me something. My cousin, you say you mean to be revenged on him. Mm. Do you mean that? What will you do to Cyrano? Order him into danger? He loves that. I know what I should do. What? Leave him here, with his cadets, while all the regiment goes on to glory. Oh, that would torture him, to sit all through the war with folded arms. I know his nature. If you hate that man, strike at his self-esteem. A oh, woman, the woman who but a woman would have thought of this. He'll eat his heart out, and you will be avenged. <laughs> you love me then, a little, making my enemies your own, hating them. I should like to see in that a sign of love, Roxanne. Perhaps it is one. Here are the orders for each company, ready to send. So this is for the guards. I'll keep that. <laughs> Cyrano! You too, you play your little games, do you? Sometimes. And you? Ah, I am mad about you. Listen, I leave tonight, but let you through my hands now when I feel you trembling. Close by in the Rue d'Orléans, the Capuchins have their new convent. By their law, no layman may pass inside those walls. I'll see to that. The servants of my uncle Cardinal will fear his nephew. So I'll come to you masked, after everyone thinks I have gone. Oh, let me wait one day. If this be known, your honor, 
Bah! The war, your duty! Only say yes. Ah, go! Christian remains. I must have you a hero, Antoine. Heaven! So you can love. One for whose sake I fear. I go. Will that content you? Yes, my friend. Yes, my friend. Not a word to Cyrano. He would never forgive me if he knew I stole his war. Ah, cousin. Uh, never mind me. If Christian comes, tell him to remain. Uh, when he comes, what will you talk about? You, you, you always know beforehand. About nothing. Or about everything. I will say, speak of love in your own words. Improvise, rhapsodize, be eloquent. <gasps> Shh. Christian, I have your theme. Bring on your memory. Now is your chance to surpass yourself. Come, look, intelligence. Come and learn your lines. No. What lunacy is this? Come quickly. No, I say. I've had enough taking my words, my letters, all from you. Making our love a little comedy. It was a game at first, but now she cares. Well, thanks to you. I'm not afraid. I'll speak for myself. Undoubtedly. I will. Why not? I am no fool. You shall see. Besides, my dear friend, you have you've taught me much. I ought to know something. I know enough to take a woman in my arms. Here she comes. <clears throat> well, Cyrano, stay here. Speak for yourself, my friend. Is that you, Christian? Let us stay here in the twilight. The air is fragrant. We shall be alone. Sit down there. <laughs> so now, tell me things. I love you. Yes, speak to me of love. I, I love you. Now be eloquent. I, I love... He, you have your theme. Improvise, rhapsodize. I love you so. Of course. And then? And then? I should be so happy if you love me too. Roxanne, say that you love me too. I ask for cream, you give me milk and water. I... Tell me first a little how you love me. Well, very much. Oh, tell me how you feel. Uh, your throat, if only I might. Kiss it. Christian! I, I love you so. I, again? No, not again. I do not love you. <clears throat> that is better. I, I adore you. Oh. I grow absurd. And that displeases me as much as if you had grown ugly. I... Gather your dreams together into words. Uh, I love... Yes, I know. You love me. Adieu. No, but wait, let me... I, I was going to say... That you adore me? Yes, I know that too. No, go away. I... 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 A great success. <laughs> Help me. Not I. I cannot live unless she loves me. Now, this moment, I... But wait, up there, look quickly. Let us try what can be done. It, it is more than you deserve. Stand over there. Idiot there, in front of the balcony. Let me stand underneath. I'll whisper you what to say. But she may hear. What if she... Uh, uh, less noise! Hello. Uh, we, we serenaded Mont Fleury. What next? Uh, down to the corner of the street this way, and the other over there. If anybody comes, play a tune. Sad for a man, merry for a woman. Now go! Call her. <clears throat> Roxanne! Who is calling? I. Who? Uh, Chris John. You again? I had to tell you. No, go away. You, you tell me nothing. You do not love me anymore. No, not anymore. I love you evermore and ever, more and more. <clears throat> why, very well. Tell me now why you speak so haltingly. Has your imagination gone lame? Here, this grows too difficult. Your words tonight, they hesitate. Why? 
through the warm summer gloom, they grope in darkness toward the light of you. My words well aimed find you more readily. <laughs> My words fly upward to you, heavy with honey like returning bees to your small secret ear. Moreover, yours fall to me swiftly, mine more slowly rise. Yet not as slow as they did at first. They have learned the way, and, and you have welcomed them. Am I so far above you now? So far, if, if you let fall one hard word out of that height, you crush me. Then I'll come down. No. And why so great a no? L let me enjoy the one moment I ever, my, my one chance to s speak to you, unseen. Unseen? Yes. Yes. Night making all things dimly beautiful. One veil over us both. You only see the darkness of a long cloak in the gloom. I, the the whiteness of a summer gown. You are all light. I am all darkness. How can you know what this moment means to me? If, if ever I was eloquent. You were eloquent. You have never heard till now my own heart speaking. Why not? Until now, I, I spoke through, yes. through the sweet drunkenness you pour into the world out of your eyes. But tonight, I speak for the first time. For the first time? Y your voice tonight is not even the same. How should it be? I, I have another voice tonight. Mine, my own, daring. Where was I? I, I forget. Forgive me. I, this is all Strange, like a dream. Sweet, like a dream. How strange. Is it not so to be myself to you and have no fear of moving you to laughter? Laughter? Why? Why? What am I? What, what is any man that he dare ask for you? Therefore, my heart hides behind phrases. I, I come here to pluck down out of the sky the evening star and then smile and, and stoop to gather little flowers. Are they not sweet, those little flowers? Not enough sweet for you and me tonight. You never spoke to me like this. There comes one moment, once, and God help those who let that moment pass by when beauty stands looking into the soul with grave, sweet eyes that sicken at pretty words. If this be true, and when that moment comes to you and me, what words will you... All those, all those, all those that, that blossom in my heart, I'll, I'll fling to you armfuls of loose bloom, love, I... I love beyond breath, beyond reason, beyond love's own power of loving. Your name is like a golden bell hung in my heart. And when I think of you, I, I tremble and the bell swings and rings. Roxanne, Roxanne, along my veins, Roxanne. Yes, that is love. Yes, that is love. Yet love seeketh not his own. Dear, you may take my happiness to make you happier, even though you never know I gave it to you. Only let me hear the distant laughter of your joy. I never look at you, but there's some new virtue born in me, some new courage. Do you begin to understand a little? It is my voice, mine, my own, that, that makes you tremble there in the, in the green gloom above me. Yes, I do tremble, and I weep, and I love you, and I am yours, and you have made me thus. 
What is death like, I wonder? I know everything else now. I, I have done this to you. Only let me ask one thing more. One kiss. You ask me for us. Uh, uh, yes, I... Uh, you go too far. But why? Why? Christian, be quiet. What is it that you say to yourself? I am angry with myself because I go too far. <laughs> and, so, and so I say to myself, Christian, be quiet. <laughs> Hark. Someone is coming. A sad tune, a merry tune. A man, a woman. What do they mean? A priest. <laughs> I am looking for Madame Robin. Uh, uh, to the right. Uh, keep to the right. I thank you, sir. Good fortune, father, uh, and my service to you. Win me that kiss. No. Sooner or later, it's bound to True. Happen. Soon or late, it must be. Because you are young and she is beautiful. Since it must be, I had rather be myself the cause of what must be. Are you still there? We were speaking of... A kiss. The word is sweet. What will the deed be? Are your lips afraid even of its burning name? Not, not much afraid, not, not too much. Have you not unwittingly laid aside laughter, slipping beyond speech from, from words to smile, from smiles to sighs, from sighing even to tears? One step more, only one, from a tear to a kiss, one step. Hush. Why? What shame? There was a queen of France not long ago, and, and a great lord of England. A queen's gift, a crown jewel. Indeed. Indeed. Like him, I, I have my silences and my sorrows. Like her, you are the queen I dare adore. Like him, I am faithful and forlorn. Like him, beautiful. Why, so I am. I forgot that. Then come. Gather your sacred blossom. Go. Your crown jewel. Go on. Your old new song. Climb. Your up. moment Not made yet. immortal. But climb up, animal. Roxanne. Ah, oh, Roxanne. I have won what I have won, the feast of love, and I am Lazarus. Yet I have something now that is mine, that, that was not mine before I spoke the words that won her, not for me. A merry tune, sad tune, ah, the Capuchin, <laughs> hola! Who is it? Uh, I is Christian there with you? Cyrano. Good morrow, cousin. Uh, cousin, good morrow. I'm coming down. She lives here, Madeleine Robin. Oh, you said Roland. No, Robin. R O B I N. What is it? A, a letter, a matter of some importance. A very noble lord gave it to me. De Guiche. He dares. It will not be long until he learns that I love you. Mademoiselle, the drums are beating and the regiment arms for the march. Secretly, I remain here in the convent. I have disobeyed. I shall be with you soon. I send this first by an old monk as simple as a sheep who understands nothing of this. Your smile is more than I can bear and seek no more. Be alone tonight, waiting. Father, this letter concerns you oh. and you. Listen, Mademoiselle, the 
Cardinal has determined a certain course of action, although against your will. <clears throat> that is why I am sending this to you by a most holy man, intelligent and discreet. You will communicate to him our order to perform, here and at once, the rite of holy matrimony. You and Christian will be married privately in your house. I know you hesitate. Be resigned, nevertheless, to the cardinal's command, who sends here with his blessing. Be assured also of my own respect and high consideration. Signed, your very humble uh, and- A noble lord, I said so. A very worthy lord. Am I a good reader of letters? Be careful. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. So you are to be- I am the bridegroom. <clears throat> but Oh, you... look here. Postscript. Give to the convent in my name 120 pistoles. A worthy lord. Think of it. A very worthy lord. Daughter, resign yourself. I am resigned. De Guiche may come. Keep him out here with you. Please do not let I him. I understand. How long will you be? Oh, a quarter of an hour. Hurry. I'll remain here. Come. Now, to make his grace delay that quarter of an hour, I have it. Up here. Where is that cursed bleeding capuchin? There is the house all dark. <gasps> what is that? Why, where did this man fall from? From the moon, the moon. I fell out of the moon. <laughs> the fellow is mad. Where am I? Why? Oh, what time is it? What place is this? What hour? What season? A hundred years? An hour ago? I really cannot say how long I fell. I was in yonder shining sphere. <laughs> Quite so. Please let me pass. Where am I? Tell the truth. I can bear it. In what quarter of the globe have I descended like a meteorite? This is ridiculous. I could not say where I fell. The, the earth spun uh, round uh, so uh, fast. Uh, or was it the earth, I wondered? Or, or is this another world? Another moon? Oh, whither have I been drawn from the dead weight of my posterior? Sir, <laughs> I repeat. His face. Ah, uh, this mask. Are we in Venice? Genoa? A lady <gasps> is waiting for me. Oh, so this is Paris. <laughs> <laughs> this fool becomes amusing. Oh, you smile. I do. Kindly permit me. Uh, excuse my appearance. I... I, I arrived by the last thunderbolt, a, a trifle singed as I came through the ether. These long journeys, you know, there are so few conveniences. Oh, my eyes are full of stardust. Oh, look, on my doublet, uh, that's a comet's hair. <laughs> when I write my book and tell the tale of my adventures, uh, these little stars that shake out of my cloak, I must say to use as asterisks. Quite so. That will do now. I oh, wish... You desire to learn from my own lips the character of the moon's surface, its inhabitants... I and desire any... no such thing. You I... wish to know from what mysterious means I reached the moon. Well, <clears throat> confidentially, <clears throat> it was an invention of my own choosing. <laughs> I laid me on the strand my head fronting the moonbeams, since the hair retains moisture. And then I began to rise, slowly, slowly, effortlessly, as upon angels' wings, until suddenly I felt a shock. And then... And then... And then... The time is up, Your Grace. You are now free, and they are bound in wedlock. That voice and that nose, Cyrano. Cyrano. This very moment, they have exchanged rings. Who? You. He. My sincere compliments. You also, my inventor of machines. Your rigmarole would have detained a saint entering paradise. Decidedly, you must not fail to write that book someday. Sir, I engage myself to do so. 
My lord, the handsome couple you and God have joined together. Quite so. Madame, kindly bid your husband farewell. Your regiment leaves tonight, sir. Report at once. You mean for the front? To the war? S certainly. I thought the Guinness were not going. Oh, yes. Here is the order. Baron, deliver this. The regiment on the march. Take care of him for me and have him write to me every single day. That I promise you. Insomnia, what a famine. Halt! Who goes there? Bergerac! Halt! Bergerac, idiot! Thank heaven again. Hush! Yes, go right on. Risk your life every morning before breakfast to send a letter. I promised he should write every single day. Uh, the boy looks pale when he is asleep. Thin, too. Handsome, nonetheless. Go and get some sleep, risking a life like yours to carry letters. Where are you going now? To write another. Look at my tongue. I said this air was indigestible. Oh, my coronet for a half pound of cheese. Ugh. I have no stomach for this war. I'll stay in my tent. Yes. No bread and no fight. Cyrano, come here. You know how to talk to them. Get them laughing. What are you gnawing there? Gun wads and axle grease. Fat country this around our eyes. You there with the long face. I have something on my mind that troubles me. What's that? My stomach. My teeth are growing rusty. Sharpen them. My belly sounds as hollow as a drum. Beat the long roll on it. <laughs> I'm as hungry as a wolf. Put on your sheep's clothing. Always the clever answer. Always the answer for a good cause, yes. Let me die so, under some rosy golden sunset. By the hand of one worthy to be my foe, let me fall. Steel in my heart and laughter on my lips. Oh, very well. Young, yes. ah, you think of nothing but yourselves. Here, Bertrandu, you were a shepherd once. Your pipe now. Come, breathe, blow. Listen, you Gascon. Now it is no more the shrill fife. It is the flute through woodlands far away calling. No longer the hot battle cry, but the cool, quiet pipe our goat herds play. Listen, the forest glens, 
the hills, the downs, the green sweetness of night on the Dordogne. Listen, you Gascon. It is all Gascon. You make them weep. For homesickness, a hunger more noble than hunger of the flesh. It is their hearts now that are starving. Here comes Monsieur de Guiche. Ah. Uh, he makes me weary with his collar of lace over his corselet, like a ribbon tied around a sword. Is he to see us looking miserable? Quick, books, chess, dominoes. As for me, I read Descartes. Well, what have we here? Black looks? Yes, gentlemen, I am informed that I am not popular. I can afford your little hates. My conduct under fire is well known. Only yesterday I drove the Count du Bacquois from Barpaume, pouring my men down like an avalanche. I myself led the charge. And your white sash? You heard that episode? Yes. Rallying my men for the third time, I was in danger of being shot or captured. But I thought quickly, took off, and threw away the sash that marked my military rank. And so, being inconspicuous, escaped among my own forces, rallied them, returned again, and won the day. What do you say to that? Presence of mind, yes? Henry of Navarre, being outnumbered, never flung away his white sash. <laughs> my device was a success, however. Perhaps. Perhaps. An officer does not lightly resign the privilege of being a target. Now, if I had been there, your courage and mine differ in this. <laughs> when you threw off your white sash, I should have put it on. Boasting again. Boasting? Lend it to me tonight. I'll lead the first charge with your sash over my shoulder. Gasconade once more. You are safe making that offer, and you know it. My sash lies on the riverbank between the lines, a spot swept by artillery impossible to reach alive. Yes. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Thank you. That bit of white is what I need to make a signal. I was hesitating. You have decided me. What is it? There's a man down there running away. What? A Spaniard, very useful as a spy to both sides. He informs the enemy as I instruct him. From that spy of mine, I learned of the Spaniard's intention to attack. I told him, go out and watch for my signal. Where you see that, let them attack there. Ah, well, gentlemen. You may have perhaps an hour. Oh, an hour. The great thing is to gain time. Any moment our reinforcements may arrive. And to gain time. You will all be so kind as to lay down your lives. Ah, your revenge? I make no pretense of loving you. But since you gentlemen esteem yourselves invincible, the bravest of the brave and all that, why need we be personal? I serve the king in choosing as I choose. Sir, permit me to offer all our thanks. You love to fight a hundred against one. Here is your opportunity. My friends, we shall now add to our old Gascon arms with the six chevrons, blue and gold, a seventh, blood red! No! Hey! Christian. Roxanne. Yes. I would like to say farewell to her with my whole heart, written for her to keep. I, th I thought of that. I have written your farewell. Show me. You wish to read it? <laughs> of course. What, what, what is it? Look, little circle. Circle? Yes. A tear? So it is. Uh, we poets are like lovers, <laughs> believing our imagination. All seems true, you understand? There's half the charm in writing. This letter I made so pathetic that I wept while I wrote it. You wept? Yes, because it is a little thing to die, but not to see her, that, that is terrible, and, and I shall never, you will never. Give me that. Halt, who goes there? What is it? Why, a coach. A coach. What? It must have driven through the Spanish lines. Fire! Oh, no, the driver is shouting. He is saying on the service of the king. The king, the king. The king. The king. beat the assembly. 
Fall in, rascals. Two of you lower the steps. Open the door. Hat off all. Good morning. Ooh. On the king's service, you. Yes, my own king. Love. God is merciful. You. Why have Your war lasted so long. But why? I wonder if I dare look at her. You cannot remain here. Why, certainly. Bring that here, somebody. <laughs> Thank you. There. Oh. Why, how serious you all are. Do you know it is a long drive here from Arras? Cousin, I am glad to see you. Uh, how did you come? How did I find you? Very easily, I followed where the country laid waste. Uh, but how did you come through? Through the Spanish lines, of course. Well, they let you pass. What did you say? How did you manage? Yes, it must have been difficult. No, I simply drove along. Now and then, someone scowled at me, and I smiled back my best smile, whereupon Spaniards, being the most polished gentlemen in the world, <laughs> I passed. Certainly, that smile should be a passport. <laughs> but did they not ask your errand or your destination? Oh, frequently. Then I dropped my eyes and said, I have a lover. <laughs> Whereupon the Spaniard, with an air of ferocious dignity, would close the carriage door, bow very low, and say, Pass, senorita. <laughs> you must leave this place. At once. Yes, immediately. Because in half an hour. Or three quarters. Perhaps it might be better. If you. Oh, I see. You are going to fight. I remain here. No, no, no you can't. He is my husband. No. I will die with you. Your eyes. Why do you? You know why. This post is dangerous. How dangerous? The proof is, we are ordered. Oh, you wish to make a widow of me. On my word of honor. No matter. I am just a little mad. I stay here. We'll fight now. Yeah! I am safe with you, my friends. But perhaps the Count ought to leave us. Any moment now, there may be danger. <laughs> this is too much. I must inspect my guns. I shall return. You may change your mind. There will yet be time. Never. Roxanne. No. She stays here! <laughs> no, I shall not stir one step. Open the hand that holds your handkerchief. Why? Well, my company was in want of a banner. We have now the fairest in the army. <laughs> With her smiling on me, I could die happy. <laughs> if only I had something Shame in my on stomach. you! Feast your eyes and forget your stomach. It must be this fresh air. I am starving. Let me see. Cold partridges, pastries, that would do. Will someone bring that to me? Will someone? Where are we to find? Why, there in my carriage. What? All you have to do is unpack and carve and serve things. Oh, notice my coachman. You may recognize an old friend. <laughs> well, Our fellows. good fairy. Well, gentlemen. I must speak with you. Spread them on the ground. I must see you before you speak to her. Notice, my whip handle is one long sausage. <laughs> we being about to die, first let us dine. All for Gaspois! Yes! And if De Guiche comes, he is not invited. <laughs> Here comes De Guiche! Oh, 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 quick, hide everything! Uh, the, the dishes, tablecloth, bottles! Uh, uh, now look hungry again, Ragano out of sight! <clears throat> Madame, have you decided? I stay here. You have time to escape? No. Very well. Someone give me a musket. What? what? I stay here also. Sir, you show courage. A Gascon, in spite of all that lace. <laughs> Why? Must I run away and leave a woman? We might give him something to eat. What do you say? <laughs> a feast. Here a little, there a little. <laughs> <laughs> do you think I want your leavings? <laughs> Colonel, you improve. A Gascon, a Gascon after all. I have placed my pikemen. We'll review them. Will you take my arm? Speak quickly, what is it? If Roxanne well? speaks about your letters, yes? do not make the mistake of showing surprise. I, I must tell you, I, I had forgotten it until just now. You have, um, you have written oftener than you think. <laughs> I have. I, I took upon me in, to interpret you and wrote sometimes without... My knowing? Perfectly simple. Oh, yes, perfectly. 
Well, for a month we have been blockaded here. How did you manage to uh, ascend before all daylight? I, I managed ah, to. Uh... I see. That was also perfectly simple. Well, so I wrote to her. How many times a week? Uh, twice. Three times. Four. Oftener. Every day? Uh, every day. Every single day. And that wrought you up into such a flame that you faced death. Hush! Just... Not before her. Now, Christian. Tell me now why you came here, why you made your way over these ruined roads among moss troopers and ruffians. You to join me here. Because your letters. Meaning? It was your own fault if I ran into danger. I went mad, mad with you. Think what you have written me. How many times? Each one more wonderful than the last. Oh, this for a few absurd love letters. Hush, absurd? How can you know? I thought I loved you ever since one night when a voice under my window that I never would have known breathed your soul to me. But all this time, your letters, every one was like, like hearing your voice in the darkness all around me, like your arms around me. I read them over and over. I grew faint reading them. I belonged to you. Every page was like a petal fallen from your soul, like the light and the fire of a great love, sweet and, and strong and true. Sweet and, and strong and true. You felt that, Roxanne. You know how I feel. So you came to- Oh, my Christian, I came here to say, forgive me. It is time to be forgiven now, and we may die presently. Forgive me for being light and vain and loving you only because you were beautiful. Roxanne. Afterwards, I knew better. Afterwards, I loved you more for yourself, too, knowing you more and loving you more. And now, now? it is yourself I love, your own self. Roxanne. Be happy. You must have suffered, for, for you must have known how frivolous I was. Oh, and to be loved for the mere costume to a soul like yours, that must have been torture. Therefore, with words, you revealed your heart. And now that image of you which filled my eyes first, I see better now, and I see it no more. Oh. You still doubt your victory. Roxanne! You... I understand. You cannot perfectly believe in me, a love like this. I want no love like this. I want love only, only for... for what every woman sees in you? I can do better than that. No, it, it was better before. John, I... You do not altogether know me. Dear, there, there is more of me than there was. And with this, I can love more of you. More of what makes you your own self. Truly. If you were less lovable, no. less charming, ugly even, I would love you still. You mean that? I do mean that. Ugly. Yes, even then. What's the matter? Only nothing. One moment. But I'm I keeping you from those poor fellows. Go. Smile at them. They are going to die. Dear Christian. Cyrano. Christian, you, you look. She does not love me anymore. You think not? She loves you. No. She loves only my soul. No. Yes, and that means you and you love her. I? I see. I know. That's true. Well, tell her so. No! Why not? Why? Look at me. She would love me if I were ugly. She said that? Yes. Now then. It was good of her to tell you that. Nonsense. Oh, do not believe such madness. Do not take her at her word. Go on. You, you never will be ugly. Go. She would never forgive me. That is what we shall see. No, no. Let her choose between us. Tell her everything. No, you torture me. Shall I ruin your happiness because I have a cursed pretty face? That seems too unfair. Am I to ruin yours because I happen to be born with the power to say what you perhaps feel? Tell her. Do not try me too far. I am tired of being my own rival. Christian. Our secret marriage, no witnesses. Uh, fraudulent. That can be annulled. But do not try me. I want her love for the poor fool I am, or not at all. Ugh, I am going through with this. I shall know one way or the other. Now I shall walk down to the end of the post. Go, tell her. 
Let her choose one of us. It will be you. I hope so. Roxanne. No. Yes, no. Christian. Cyrano has news for you. Important. Oh, important? N nothing. Only Christian thinks you should know. I, I do know. He still doubts what I told him just now. I saw that. I is it true? What you told him just now? It is true. I said that I should love him even. The word comes hard before me. Even if he were. Say it. I shall not be hurt. Ugly. Yes, even then. Hark, the guns. Hideous. Hideous. Disfigured. Or disfigured. But you, but you could love him so as much yes, as. Yes, and more. True. This oh. is this is true. Perhaps. Oh, this is too much happiness. Roxanne, I. Cyrano! I, I must. Cyrano! Yes! What is it? Oh, go on. Oh, they're fighting. I cannot ever tell her now. Ever. What has happened? Nothing. Oh, oh, come away. You were telling me something. Uh, nothing. It is only that uh, the spirit of Christian is, that, that, that his soul was, that his soul what? is, no less. <laughs> Christian! Roxanne. Oh. All gone. Yes, my darling. I've told her she loves you. His cheek grows cold against mine. A letter over his heart for me. My letter. <laughs> but Roxanne, come away. Wait a little, he is dead. No one ever knew him but you. Was he not a great lover, a great man, a hero? Yes, Roxanne. A heart deeper than we knew, a soul magnificently tender. Yes, Roxanne. He is dead now. Why, so am I. For I am dead, and my love mourns for me, and does not know. Sister Claire has been looking in the glass at her new cap twice. And Sister Marta stole a plum out of the tart this morning. That was wrong. Very wrong. Oh, but such a little look. Such a little plum. I shall tell Monsieur de Cyrano this evening. No. Oh, no. He will make fun of us. He will say nuns are so vain. And so greedy. And so good. It must be ten years, Mother Marguerite, that he has come here every Saturday, is it not? More than ten years. Ever since his cousin Roxanne came to live among us here. 
No one else ever turns that happy sorrow of hers into a smile. He is such fun. He makes us almost laugh. And he teases everyone. And pleases everyone. And we all love him. <laughs> and he likes our cake, too. <laughs> Let us go in. Madame Roxanne has a visitor. The Duke de Grandmont, is it not? Marshal de Guiche? I think so, yes. He's not been to see her for months. He is busy. The court. The camp. The world. And you remain here, wasting all that gold forever in mourning. Forever. Was Christian all that? If you knew him. Uh, we were not precisely intimate. And his last letter always at your heart. It hangs here like a holy reliquary. Dead, and you love him still. Sometimes I think he has not altogether died. Our hearts meet, and his love flows all around me, living. You see Cyrano often? Every week. My old friend takes the place of my gazette. Brings me all the news every Saturday. There's Lebray. How is it with our friend? Badly, indeed. He exaggerates. His satires make a host of enemies. He insults the false nobles, the false priests, the false artists, the false heroes, in short, everyone. But they fear that sword of his. No one dare touch him. Mm, that may be so. It is not violence I fear for him, but, but solitude, poverty. His poor nose looks like old ivory. He has but one coat left. That is nothing strange in this world. No, you need not pity him overmuch. My Lord Marshal. I say, do not pity him overmuch. He lives his life his own way. Thought, word, and deed free. My Lord Duke. Yes, I know. I have all. He has nothing. Nevertheless, today, I should be proud to shake his hand. Adieu. I will go with you. Yes, I envy him now and then. Do you know when a man wins everything in this world, when he succeeds too much, he feels somehow a thousand small displeasures with himself, a sort of vague disgust. The ducal robes mounting up step by step to pride and power, somewhere among their folds draw after them the rustle of dry illusions, vain regrets as your veil on the stairs draws along the whisper of dead leaves. The sentiment does you honor. Oh, yes, Monsieur Lebray, you pardon us. One moment. It is true that no one dares attack your friend. Some people dislike him nonetheless. The other day at court, such a one said to me, this man Cyrano may die accidentally. Thank you. Keep him at home all you can. Tell him to be careful. I'll warn him, yes, but Here I Here I am. What is it? Madame Ragano wishes to see you. Madame, uh, Monsieur. Tell your troubles to Lebray for a moment. Uh, Madame, uh, uh, Monsieur, I went to see him just now, our friend. Uh, but as I came near his home, as he was coming out of his door, I, I hurried on to meet him. But then, as he was going around the corner, a lackey with a heavy log of wood at the Monsieur, no. I, I ran to him. <laughs> the cowards. I found him lying there, a great hole in his head. Is he alive? Uh, alive? Yes. But I had to carry him up to his room. Heavens, have you seen his room? Is he suffering? Uh, no, uh, unconscious. Did you call a doctor? Uh, yes, one came for charity. Oh, poor Cyrano. Uh, yes. uh, we must not tell Roxanne at once. No. Did the doctor say? Uh, he said uh, fever and lesions of the... Uh, uh, I forget those long names. Uh, if you had seen him there, his head all white bandages. If he tries to raise his head, he may die. This way, it is shorter, through the chapel. Yes, yes, yes. Running when I call to him. Poor dear Ragano must have been very tragic. What a day. Something in these bright autumn afternoons, happy yet regretful. An old sorrow smiling. Ah, the old chair for my old friend. The best one in our best parlor. Thank you, sisters. There, the hour. My silks. All done striking. He never was so late before. Oh, my thimble. Certainly nothing would ever keep him away. Ah, uh, what was I saying? Hard to match these old faded colors sometimes. After 14 years late for the first time. 
Yes, yes. Maddening, I was... I was detained by a... Well? A, an old acquaintance. At, at least a very old friend of mine. Did you tell him to go away? For the time being, yes, I... I said, excuse me, this is Saturday. I, I have a previous engagement, one I cannot miss even for you. <laughs> Come back an hour from now. Your friend will have to wait. I shall not let you go till dark. Perhaps a little before dark. I must go. May I ever hope to see the end of that embroidery. I thought it was time you said that. The leaves. What color? Perfect Venetian red. Oh, look at them fall. Yes. They know how to die. A little way from the branch to the earth. A, a little fear of mingling with the common dust. And yet they go down gracefully. A, a fall that seems like flying. Melancholy, you. Why, no, Roxanne. <laughs> then let the leaves fall. Tell me now the court news, my gazette. Uh, let me see. Ah. Saturday the 19th. The king fell ill after eight helpings of grape oh. marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cyrano. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, it, it is nothing, nothing, truly. But... Uh, my old wound uh, from a Ross. Sometimes, you know, it... My poor friend. It is nothing. It, it, it will soon be gone. There. It is gone. We all have our old wounds. I have mine here in this faded scrap of writing. It is hard to read now, all but the blood and tears. His letter. Did you not promise me that someday... That but someday you would let me read it? His letter? You... you wish to... I do wish it. Today. Here. May I open it? Open it and read. Farewell, Roxanne. Because today I die. Aloud? I know it will be today, my own dearly beloved. And my heart still so heavy with love I have not told. And I die without telling you. No more shall my eyes drink the sight of you like wine, never more with a look that is a kiss, follow the sweet grace of you. How you read it, his letter. I remember now the way you have, pushing back a lock of hair with one head, hand from your forehead, and, and my heart cries out. His letter, and you read out it so. And keeps on crying, farewell, my dear, my in a voice. Dearest, my heart's own, my own treasure. In such a voice. My love. That I remember I never hearing long ago. Away from you, I. Even now, I shall not leave you. In another world, I shall still be that one that loves you, loves you beyond reason, beyond. How can you read now? It is dark. Oh. And all these 14 years, you were the friend who came to me to be amusing. Roxanne. It was you. No, no, Roxanne. And I no. might have known every time I heard you speak my name. No, it was, it was you. No, I, I... I understand everything now. The letters. That was you. No. The dear, foolish words. That was you. No. The voice in the dark. That was you. On my honor. And the soul. 
That was all you. I never loved you. Yes, you loved me. No, he loved you. Even now you love me. No, no. And why so great a no? No, no, my own dear love. I love you not. How many things have died and are newborn? Why were you silent for so many years? You knew that in this letter lying on my breast, your tears, you knew they were your tears. The blood was his. Why do you break that silence now, today? Why, oh, because I, I... I knew it, he's here. He? Oh, that faintness. No, was that no, I, it, it, it is nothing. I, I, I did not finish my gazette <clears throat> Saturday the 26th, an hour or so before dinner. Monsieur de Bergerac died. Oh. Foully murdered. <laughs> Cyrano, what have they done to you? Struck down. By the sword of a hero let me fall. Steel in my heart and laughter on my lips. Yes, I, I said that once. How fate loves a jest. Behold me now, ambushed. My battlefield a gutter. My, my noble foe a lackey with a log of wood. Oh, monsieur. Oh, Ragano, stop blubbering. <laughs> what, are you, what are you writing nowadays, old poet? Oh, I am not a poet now. I light the candles for Moliere. Oh, Moliere. But I am leaving him tomorrow. Yesterday, he played Scapin. And he has stolen your scene. The whole scene, word for word. Ah. <laughs> Showed good taste. <laughs> no. The scene went well. Oh, monsieur, how they laughed and laughed. <laughs> how they did laugh. <laughs> yes, that has been my life. You remember that night when Christian spoke under your window? It was always so. I while I stood in the shadows underneath, others slipped up to win the applause, the, the kiss. They are going to pray now. There is the bell. Sister, sister. No, I no, do not, do not go away. I, I may not still be here when you return. A little harmony is all I need. Listen. You shall not die. I love you. No, that is not in the story. You remember when beauty said I love you to the beast that was a fairy prince? His ugliness changed and dissolved like magic. But you see, I am still the same. And I, I have done this to you. It is my fault, all mine. No, all, on the contrary. I had never known womanhood and its sweetness but for you. My mother did not love to look at me. I, I never had a sister. Later on, I feared the mistress with the mockery behind her smile, but, but you, I, that because of you, I have had one friend, not quite all a friend across my life, one whispering silken gown. I've never loved but one man, and now I have lost him twice. Lebray, I, I shall be up there presently. Oh, 
among the stars without having to invent a flying machine. What are you saying? Oh, oh yes, the, the moon, the moon. The, uh, that is the place for me. I shall find there those other souls who should be friends of mine. Galileo, Socrates. No, no, it is too idiotic, too unfair. Such a friend, such a poet, such a man to die so, to die so. There goes Lebray growling. Oh, my friend. Oh, I must go. Pardon me, I, I cannot stay. My moonbeam comes to carry me. Oh, oh my. I, I would not have you mourn any the less that good, brave, noble Christian. But perhaps I, I, I ask you only this, that you may give a double meaning to your widow's weeds and the tears you let fall for him might be for a little, my tears. Oh, my love. Uh, not here, not lying down. Let no one help me. Oh, let the old fellow find me on my feet, sword in hand. Cyrano. Oh, Cyrano. Uh, I can see him there. He grins at me. He is looking at my nose. What's that you say? Hopeless? Why, very well. But a man does not fight merely to win. Oh, you there. Who are you? Ah, oh, my ancient enemies. Fault up there, their prejudice, cowardice, compromise. What's that you say? Surrender? Never, never. You too, vanity. I knew you would overthrow me in the end. No, I, I fight on. I, I fight on. I. I, uh, 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 oh, my laurels, you have riven away, and all my roses, yet in spite of you, there is one crown I bear away, and tonight my salute shall sweep all the stars from heaven's blue threshold, one thing without stain, unspotted from the world, in spite of doom, my own, and that is... That is? My white plume.
What? Still there. 